All right, so I downloaded the Prusa Slicer. I got it all installed. I've been playing around with it since about yesterday. And as you can see here, I'm going to show you how quick it is to set up a profile real quick. Never mind any of this business. We'll take care of that in a second. But right now, uh, when you first start it up, the configuration wizard should pop up automatically. If not, you can open it by clicking on configuration, configuration wizard. And this is it right here. So it's going to ask you uh, which printer you're going to be installing and basically you're going to skip over the two Prusa ones and hit custom printer define custom printer profile and put your custom printer profile name right here is this the name of your printer and then hit next we are using Marlin if you're using one of the Ender machines uh, and my bed is 220 by 220 Origin at zero zero, that's fine. You may need to change that for an Ender five. I, I would assume the origin is at zero zero, but I know it's a different uh, coordinate system. So um, the nozzle diameter 0.4, filament diameter 1.75. That's perfect. And temperatures. This is going to be your starting temperature for your basic profile. Uh, so we're going to hit 210 and 55. And this is going to update built-in presets and check for application updates. That's fine. So hit finish. See, it changed me to Creelter Ender 3 in my print settings, filament settings, and printer settings. Those are accessible here, and that's how you're going to change the settings for your print. Uh, turning on and off the brim is available here. There's a different pr place for doing a raft. Uh, raft layers right here. So if you want to add a raft, you do that separately here. Uh, right now I have Generate Support Material turned off. And we're going to click it on real quick because you're going to want to go down and change this setting interface layers to one now that's basically the skin between your support and your model which makes it come away cleanly from the model without leaving any residue or artifacts on the model from the support so it's uh, very critical that you have it there it's something that Kira doesn't really do it'll, it'll print the support right up to the model and then you end up with little nubs or rough spots that you have to take care of in post-processing but with this uh, you can get a hold of that skin and just peel it right off and it's perfectly smooth and beautiful back there so um, you do want to leave one layer on. I found that three layers was a little too much because it was really difficult to remove the support. Uh, and on that note, I changed the pattern spacing to four because 2.5 was, it was a lot of support. Um, now you can choose to either leave that on or turn it off for your native settings. I'm going to leave it on because uh, I can come back and turn it off later. Next thing I want to do is go to layers. I didn't notice this for my first model but the layer height is set at 0.3, so that's a little bit high. You're going to want to change it to something like 0.2 probably. Uh, if you're looking for something with a little bit more detail, you can go down to 0.12. I'm at 0.16 because that works really well for me, and I am going to make the first layer height slightly higher than my regular layer height. All of the rest of this stuff, I don't really touch much. I, I haven't played with yet. Uh, and I'm already getting pretty perfect models, so I'm going to tweak some settings as we go, and if I find anything super cool, I'll let you know. I will point out while we're here, there is a spiral base mode here as well, uh, and you can change the number of the parameters for that, which means you can make a thicker spiral base still using spiral mode, uh, but without drilling a hole in your nozzle to make it bigger or buying a bigger nozzle. Also, there is the seam position. This is your Z seam. Right now it says aligned. Uh, you can change it to random. You can change it to nearest. I like to put it on rear so it's at the back of the model. That way I don't have to look at it. Uh, there are several other options in here. Support material. Uh, we looked at, I think, I believe. Yeah, so then skirt. I'm going to change loops to three just to get a little bit better of a skirt. And I'm going to look at the infill. It's set to stars. This is a Star of David pattern. Um, I do also like the honeycomb pattern. But I've noticed I've had a really good speed with the gyroid pattern. So I'm going to go there. And I'm not worried about any of the rest of this stuff either. So uh, the other settings I want to change, filament settings. This is where you can set the cost of your filament here. So my average cost for spool, let's say 26 bucks. Uh, densities, that's an average density for ABS. I don't even really print an ABS. Just the first one I grabbed off this chart I was looking at. So uh, kind of an average. 
Uh, don't change the extrusion multiplier until you get a print and see if you need to add to the extrusion or subtract from the extrusion. I haven't needed to adjust that at all yet. So uh, then you got your custom G code uh, for filament settings, which is interesting. Don't really mess with. Um, so we'll save the settings there. We're pretty much good to go. And printer settings. Now in here you can do your custom start and end G code. I do have my start and end G code for the Ender 3 up on a video in the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to the Ender 3 playlist. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out and you can actually grab that and drag it over here. Although I will tell you the start code worked perfectly with the purge lines and everything. Uh, but the end code did not seem to work. So I'm going to be working on that and making some tweaks to it. Uh, but so far, if you're going to bring that code over, just do the start code. Um, and then you have machine limits. Uh, these are your maximum speeds and stuff. And of course you have, you want to go here and change your height. It doesn't ask you the, the maximum print height when you're setting up the initial printer. It just asks the width and the depth. So, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out that is freaking awesome with these guys is you don't need a separate plugin for OctoPrint. I can go right here, hit browse, and it'll show me the OctoPrint instances on my server. So I grab that and I am good to go. Now, this here, you need the API key and password. To get that API key and password, if you want to hook up to OctoPrint, you're going to go ahead and hit settings in your OctoPrint and you're going to go over here where it says API. And you're going to copy and paste this. Now obviously you can't see mine because I blurred it out, but And so now I put in my API key, and if I hit the test button, connection to OctoPrint works correctly. Now what this allows me to do is this little button here where it says send G-code. I can upload that directly to OctoPy, and I can tell it to start printing once it's done uploading, um, which is awesome. I don't need an extra plugin like Kira does in order to run OctoPrint from this slicer. It's good to go from the jump. So... That's going to be it for this series of setting it up, guys. Go ahead, get your profile all dyed in, uh, uh, throw a print on there, and leave a comment down below to let me know how it comes out because I'm really, really pleased with this so far. Uh, this is version 2.0, and it is very stable. I haven't noticed any bugs so far, knock on wood. So definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know how you're liking it, guys.